Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. It's so great to see all your faces in person for our program today. I'm put on my glasses. I'm Shauna Sherman, uh, the manager for the San Francisco Public Library's African American Center, which is in the main library. And we are so happy to be in this with this esteemed group of current and past poet laureates, uh, Dr. Deborah Major, Dr. Adole Nzinga, and Tongo Ison Martin, with music by Destiny Muhammad. Before we get started with our program, I want to acknowledge that we are on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramaytu Shaloni, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula and continue to live and work and play here today. As the indigenous stewards of this land and in accordance with, the care, with their traditions, the Ramaytu Shaloni have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place, as well as for all peoples who reside in their traditional territory. We wish to pay our respects by acknowledging the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramaytush community and affirm their sovereign rights as First Peoples. And as the African American Center and following the lead of our city's reparations task force, we also honor the gifts, resilience, and sacrifices of our black ancestors, particularly those who toiled the land and built the institutions that established this country's wealth and freedom, despite never being compensated nor fully realizing their own sovereignty. We acknowledge this exploitation of not only labor, but of our humanity, and are working to repair some of the harms done by public and private actors. Because of their work, we are here and will invest in the descendants of their legacy. So for those who don't know, the African American Center, as I mentioned, is on the third floor of this building. And we were born at the same time as the library, this main library was built around more than 25 years ago. And, um, at, for so much of that time, I want to give much gratitude to Thomas Robert Simpson, actor, director, producer, and writer, and the founder of Afro Solo Arts Festival, for working with us for a majority of those years. He's hosted the exhibits at the center. Yes, thank you, Thomas. So we are happy to be partnering with him on this program today. I should have said that at the start, but it's been a while since I've done this in person, so I'm a little nervous. Sorry about that. Um, and um, before I turn over the mic to Mr. Simpson, I want to let you all know um, that he has concentrated on showcasing black art and culture through solo performances and the visual and literary arts in San Francisco, and in the process has presented over 100 artists in our community. He's won the coveted Bay Area Jefferson Award for Public Service, and in 2009, he was awarded a prestigious Certificate of Honor from the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, and has been recognized by the San Francisco AIDS Foundation, Black Brothers Esteem Program, the Reggie Williams Achievement Award, and the Oakland Supper Club for his contributions to our community. Again, thank you so much, Mr. Simpson. Thank you very much, Please Shana, for that wonderful introduction. I'm going to speak from down here because I got some leg issues as I get a little bit older. Welcome. And she mentioned this being a live performance or a live event. This is our first live indoor event in two years. So you're welcoming us back live. So I'm very, very grateful for your being here for that. I'm also very grateful for our artists who are here to uh, showcase their works and I believe that you're in for a real treat. You're in for a real treat. As I thought about this event, and we talked about it being uh, Poetry Month, we wanted to have an, an event that related to poetry. And like Afro Solo does in most of our events, we like to honor those who've gone before us. So I'd like to honor, by calling their names, of some of the poets on whose Shoulders We Stand, Langston Hughes, Ashe. Maya Angelou, Ashe. Gwendolyn Brooks, Ashe. Phyllis Whitney, Ashe. Zora Neale Hurston, Ashe. Claude McKay, Ashe. Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Ashe. James Weldon Johnson, Ashe. Conti Colton, and Tashaki Shang, Ashe. June Jordan, Ashe. And there are many, many more. This is just a, a tip of the iceberg. 
As I said, we like to stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before us. I'd like for you to think about others who've become ancestors, who you think might enjoy this event today. And if you like, we'd just like to invite them to be here in spirit with us to help make this event a success. And the way I like to do it is we just call out their names. Amiri Baraka. Laura Simpson. Elroy Simpson. Pookie. Oh. Junior. Jackie. Matoya. Thank you. In making this even possible, we have several funders who have been very, very kind to us. Now, Cheryl might talk a little bit about the Dream Keepers, I'm not sure, but the Dream Keepers is one, San Francisco Arts Commission, Grants for the Arts, California Arts Council, Zellerbach Family Fund, Raynan Foundation, and there are a few others, but those are the main ones who've supported us and helped make this event possible. So, now let's get on with why you're really here, to hear these fabulous poets. And you may have heard Destiny. How many of you were not familiar with Destiny who's playing the harp before today? There are a few people who may not know you. Destiny is, I was going to say landmark, but that means something that's stable. That's not statue in, uh, in the Bay Area as a harpist. A uh, jazz harpist. She plays all around uh, the city as a well as the state as well as the country. She has performed in a number of Afro solo events. So let's give Destiny a hand. <laughs> now, did, did you get some water? Do you need some water juice up there? I would like some water. Yes. Okay, please Thank get you. Destiny some water. Thank you. And the other so ports, if you need water, we have water for you also, if Thank you like. You. All righty. To help kick us off, Again, thank you for being here. Out on the table, there is some information about upcoming events, and we welcome you to those also. I am so happy to introduce our MC for today, Dr. Cheryl E. Davis. She probably would want me to just say she's Dr. Davis, and she would get up here and might not say anything else, because she uh, has achieved so much. I'll talk a little bit about her in terms of my personal experience. I met her around 2005 or 6 when she was running a program called Mo Magic. I went to a Mo Magic meeting, and in this meeting there were about 40 people sitting around a large tables. And I was struck because once someone told her their name, she remembered it. And I was like, how did she do that? You know, people tell me their name, and five seconds later, I have to ask them again. But I thought that was so impressive. But that was just the beginning of my being impressed with her work in the community, her work with kids, her work with people who are going through difficult times. She also wanted to improve herself. So she went back and got her master's degree from US Self. From there, she went back and got her PhD. She's now running the San Francisco Human Rights Commission, which is one of the very, very important commissions in San Francisco. And as part of that, she's the head of what's called the Dream Keeper Fund. Some of you may know that our mayor, uh, Mayor Breed, I won't say took, how would you say? She changed some money from the, uh, from the police department. There was a time people were saying, take money, I'll close police departments down. She used some of the police funds and the sheriff's funds to create a fund for black people to the tune of $60 million for two years. We are in our first year and some exciting things are happening and more and more exciting things, things are going to happen. And I don't think it would have been as successful as it has been or as it will be if Dr. Cheryl Davis were not heading it up. Please welcome Dr. Cheryl Davis. Well, I just, I first have to just thank 
Thomas for that wonderful introduction and vote of confidence. I really appreciate it. Um, Cheryl Davis with the San Francisco Human Rights Commission, really grateful for um, the opportunity to participate and be with you today. I know you are here to hear from some amazing poets, and so I will begin that conversation. Thomas asked if I would say anything about the Dreamkeeper Initiative. I would just say that it is $60 million a year. It has been annualized. Um, the mayor and the president of the Board of Supervisors has made that commitment, uh, and so really grateful to see that money be informed by black community and go out specifically to, to black folks. Um, and then I wanted to just recognize our librarian here, Michael Lambert. Um, <laughs> who is the, I always mess it up, chief librarian, head librarian, um, best librarian uh, of San Francisco. And he's got to be the best. And then with regards to why I'm so excited about being able to be a part of this um, program, Thomas has been able to be in spaces with me, yes, where I remember names. And I would say the only reason that I've become good at remembering names is because I was a kindergarten teacher for a very long time. And there is nothing wrong, nothing worse than being in a parent-teacher conference with kindergarten parents and not remembering their child's name. And so that became the importance of really knowing who folks are, being able to identify them and show that you value them and you appreciate them. So uh, in that same spirit, the love of poetry as a tool, as a mechanism to share information and to kind of inspire and motivate folks is what I've grown into over the years, just a real love for poetry and anyone who does that. So I have the good honor of introducing um, our poets for today. Um, and first will be Dr. Aya Dele um, Nzinga. She is Oakland's first and current poet laureate. Yes. yes. <laughs> Nzinka is variously described as an arts and culture poet, playwright, and well-being to foster transformation in marginalized communities. She is the founding producing director of Oakland's Lower Bottom Players, Inc., the company's adaptations move among Ibn Ebonics, classic Shakespeare, and the spoken word to express graphically the anger and anguish of living in violent communities. I will say, I, I did a little looking up and what I was moved by in, I believe it was an NPR um, interview. And in that interview, just the pure passion about poetry, but more than that, the commitment to use poetry as a tool to transform and to elevate and amplify the voices of community. Um, the idea of using music and song in the way that she does, the commitment to using words and to begin this process of being multidisciplinary, but actually knowing the power of words, whether it's in music or song or spoken word, is what touched my heart. And so I can, I really look forward to hearing from um, Word Slanger today, which is her uh, name, and I think power within that. So welcome to the stage, Word Slanger, today. <laughs> Mr. Simpson asked me to share with you what a poet laureate was. Laureates are charged with the literary representation of their cities and their communities. And they're also a, a curious bunch. Most of the laureates I know are known for being badass big mouths. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but uh, yeah. So, yes, I like to move people furniture around. All right. Oh yeah, this might work. Okay. So, I brought a piece called "Standing Our Ground." That title 
is informed by the commission. This piece is a sermon length piece of poetry. And this is the first time it's ever been heard by anyone. So I'm gonna need y'all to walk with me. I'm gonna need you to walk with me as we ponder the thesis here. The thesis grounded in misconceptions of my reality. Walk with me. I want you to walk with me out past the things we think we want. The things we think we know. The things we have been told so many times. We believe them true, these flawed fantasies, this white, iced, crazy, serve neat without a napkin. And see, it makes some people prone to the fallacies fetch forward and clumsy, warlike made for Americans English. So I want you to walk with me. Walk with me through red summers and fragments of dreams blown sky high in Philly, vaporized in Oklahoma City, burnt to the ground in Rosewood. Walk with me because stillness eludes me because movement Movement is life. That's what the shark said. Buddha says, suffering follows want. Give me this bread, give me this day my daily bread and freedom. Freedom. We still want freedom. Freedom to live and die natural deaths. To become, to be, to breathe without fear. Give us free. We still want free. I am given to movement. Traveling instructions found inside dreams, rising from unmarked graves. Survival is motion, movement is the ballast. Ain't no rest in place in this sorrow land. Newborn black babies come home from the hospital in track suits and Nike shoes. My feet rarely touch the ground. Before birth, nor star bound, a runaway slave, bone of my bone, blood of my blood, spirit of Claude McKay came with me today. Try to hold me on a page so you can see me clearly, but honestly, mostly, I be in the whirlwind. I dreamt last night, Skittles and iced tea, Confederate flags, Edmund Pettus Bridge, Red Cloth Jungle Raids, the Lorraine Motel, Mint Juleps and Whips, the Altabon Ballroom, blood pooled on the streets in the lower bottoms. We're dancing, Jesus, better not dance no more. Harlem of the West, sunsetted. Southern refugees on the highway again, Fresno. Stockton, Antioch, back down south again. Mostly I be in the whirlwind. All my shoes is traveling shoes. Itinerant, landless, rented rooms. Great aunts and uncles traded horse flesh, sweat, and the ground they grew on for the city. Neon, education that changed nothing. Failed to make them white or safe. Only ate the ground, rocks and all, left nothing to stand on. Ground up in misconceptions, trying to get inside a dream. We buy things we think we want. We've been told so many times we want to believe flawed fantasies. Still bleeding the need to be free. Give us free. I still want freedom. 
I got a home in the graveyard, bottom of the ocean. What a child on fire in the service of the house of Olokun, the keeper of the deep memories and promises, rhythm, faithful sun and moonrise, ebb and flow, daughter of the tides, I know movement. From west, across the ocean, south, South to east, east to north, north to west. Sharecropping, shucking and jiving, chitlin', slick survivors, refugees, pressed down to pouring over, help mama's everlasting hands, undigestible stolen fruit, uprooted, paved the roads, worked steel mills, slaughterhouses, strung the telephone poles, died in every war. Washing America, raising its kids, moving, moving, moving. Swing down terriers to the land of whistle tips where the Orisha speak Ebonics and cold switch and some of them saints ain't who you think. I say, oh, palm oil in Florida water baptized me in the Atlantic Ocean. Lift me up above prison walls and ghetto halls, perpetual grief, street sweepers and cheap dope, swallowing the land on which we stand. Cross 110th, the jungle in Compton, the Fifth Ward, the TL, Oakland. There has been no rest in this cancer. We fester here in the image of God's Stardust and tears, can see to can't see. Magnolia scented shape shifters navigating nigritude, living the blues, jazz intersected, soul touch, gospel poor, collard green, funky, thank God and Granny's prayers, we still here. We beautiful. Black power, baby. Uhuru! Uhuru Sasa! Movement is everything. Known for doing it moving. You can catch me in the whirlwind. Translating the underground, overstanding the necessity of motion. Not melted in the smelting pot. Ever and always more fluid than that hungry thing that call itself white. The hungry, hungry moan of empty whiteness. Sucking up everything. Afraid of drums. Want to write all the music down. Need to fix it in cement. Sniffing it next to suck the blood. What come next? Can't hang around here too long. Fugitivity. That suit fit me. A runaway retired slave. I'm unlikely to pack, unpack all my bags anywhere. Trauma keeps some boxes packed. I'd be quick to bug out after bugging out. I keep duct tape on the closet full of skeletons named after dead boys, buried in open, enclosed, and without coffins. Too many names for anyone to know, and keep playing like they're saying, so I don't play no more. My feet rarely touch the ground. And sometimes, sometimes my soul fly up out my mouth. I done seen it hovering over the yellow line on the freeway, dancing at the edge of the graveyard at T intersections, slipping into the forest with a red rooster, a bowl of honey, and a sharp machete. Comfortable on the edge of nowhere, invisible, known to pack in the night and reassemble after the smoke clear. Ahead of the riders, out beyond extradition. Walk with me as we ponder the thesis here of standing ground while black in North America, grounded in my reality, past misconceptions unobscured by the fallacies poured forth in clumsy warlike English made for Americans. Walk with me, stillness, and the Buddha's lack of desire elude me. I am given to movement and thoughts of double-headed axes, razors, reparations, reciprocity, and freedom. I still want freedom. Walk with me. I'll pass things we think we want. 
the things we think we know, the things we've been told so many times, we have wished them true. Believe them true. Stillness eludes me. So walk with me out past the white, iced, crazy, poor, neat, served without a napkin. Freedom looked like an open road. Uhuru! Uhuru sasa! We beautiful. The road is open. And we want free. At a sermon length, I feel like I just left church. I feel like, you know, when she said walk with me, I could hear somebody in the back say, walk with me, Lord, walk with me. I just want to say that that is the power of poetry, the message, the freedom. I, I think about, for me, the experience of learning poetry. Didn't learn it in my era during class. I learned it on the front of a stage in church when I had to learn it for Black History Month, Maya Angelou. I know why the cage bird sings, sings for freedom. I want to thank uh, Wordslinger for that moving and amazing thing. Give her another round. And I think I left my thing. So next we have Devorah Major. Give a round for Devorah. Devorah Major was born and raised in California. Major's sixth book of poetry with open arms was released in Italy in 2019 as a bilingual edition. Her poetry collection, Khalifa's Daughter, was released as a Willow Press editor's choice in July 2020. In June 2015, Devorah's poetry play, Classic Black Voices of 19th Century African Americans in San Francisco, premiered at the San Francisco International Arts Festival. She also speaks on CDs as a part of Daughters of Yam. Devorah Major performs her work nationally and internationally with and without musicians. Major has performed her poetry in France, the Bahamas, and Germany, and is often presented at poetry festivals in Italy, Belgium, Bosnia, Jamaica, Venezuela, and other international events. I, I was moved by a couple things. First, I saw Marie, and I, I hear you were in Amo Park in the beginning, and appreciate that legacy. Give a yeah, that's right, Marie. But I think as a teacher, what I appreciated was the distinction between page poet and performing poet. This idea of someone who writes, but there's something about writing, but then being able to bring it to life, um, I appreciate and respect and thank you for that. So now let's welcome to the stage Devorah Major. <laughs> chose to come indoors on this beautiful day, so thank you. Um, I really love working with Afro Solar and with Thomas, and he always starts with the ancestors. Uh, All right. Oh, now I can hear it. Sorry. He always starts with the ancestors, so I thought I would too. Uh, I am uh, blessed to have family from... Uh, the Bahamas and Jamaica, but the family I know is from the Bahamas. And um, this is not particularly my great-grandmother's story, except for the part of Obia. 
that is her story. But other than that, it's not. But it was me thinking about what would an ancestor from the islands who's over here and taken root in that way have to say? Island woman speaks of tongues. They took my words, all of them, not knowing that in my home, I spoke many languages, not only to family, traders, and voyages, but to hawk and chimpanzee, sandpiper, and dolphin. They took my tongue, gripped my throat tightly, and commanded me to use only their words. Yes, sir, madam, please. Limited ideas that did not tell of spirit or legacy. We will not speak of the Bakra, who as we tossed in the belly of their demon ship, tore into me like a spear, chasing the neck of a lion, spilling my blood, yet leaving inside the seedling of a son. My son, whom I taught all my remembered languages, until he understood wind and star, and smoothed his freedom road, whistling the birds to quiet their song as he passed by, sending a raven to my window to let me know he was now a man unfettered. Some call me Obia woman, ask me to make juju so they could become invisible, so all the bakra would dry up and die, so we could return home. But now I only know the gift of healing song. And the gift of animal languages. And learned words the invaders would not teach me. Like survive, struggle, surmount. Renovations after surviving the worst of COVID. I think when you're talking about standing our ground, one of the things is what do you do after COVID? How do you make it work? Well, this is what I decided. I'm going to clear those rocks out my road, fill in and smooth though with the ruts in my trails. I'm going to renovate myself. Renewing my ideals and refreshing my politics while I muscle up my limbs walking in the sun through the highways and byways of my life. I'm going to lay a new foundation for my home, filling earthquake formed cracks, making it deeper and stronger than it was before. I'm going to take my words and knock down some walls that were holding me back. Replace them with smooth, smudge-free, wide-pane windows. And carefully carve doors that open easily to other galaxies. On the walls that are left, I'm going to paint some green leaf plants and purple petal flowers and thick blue skies and even a few silvery winter rainstorms to cleanse my rivers and fill my reservoirs. I'm going to build some bridges so I can safely cross over dangerous chasms and maybe even learn how to hang glide so I can start to understand what birds feel like when they ride on the wind. I'm going to unmask my dreams and bring love into my heart and home. I'm going to renovate myself. Say, I'm going to renovate myself, making my old new again. I'm going to renovate myself, and I'm starting right now. So, uh, you know, most most people of African descent, uh, we didn't start out in cities unless you're going to go back to 
whatever was happening in Yoruba land and like that. I don't know where their big villages are. But it's like me. I can say, oh, yeah, I was born in San Francisco. My dad was born in New York. That's a city. <laughs> okay. My mom in Chicago. That's a city. But my dad's people all came from the islands. They didn't come from a city. There's one stoplight on the island of Eleuthera. So this is a city scat for, the, for all of us who came to the city to know the city. We come to the city of concrete, brick, steel, and toil, country people knowing the earth, seafaring, reading the tides, gambling people holding jokers and spades. We come to this city Hard laughing, we sob, wailing, praying, celebrating people, bending and sweating. We come to this. Hiss, crack, slap, snap, siren, whirl, holler, electric, zip and burn. City, round and bustling corners. Banging our head against destiny and crumbling brick walls of confusion. We come to this. We come to this city that can cage us, enrage us, deny us, revile us, turn us from friend and family into prey and predator. We reclaim our neighbors in the hood who keep our hearts beating with the rhythm of the drums. We come to this city and we name it ours. Um, oh, thank you. I decided to do this piece because of war. Um, because there's a war going on in Sudan. Because there's a war going on in Palestine. And yes, there's a war going on in Ukraine, but uh, I went to um, Office Depot and the little machine came up and said, do you want to donate to Ukraine? And I said, well, can I do donate to Sudan? <laughs> the guy said, what? <laughs> so this is for war, but I don't want you to just think of Ukraine because the planet is on fire. The planet is on fire. And war in the 20th and 21st century means civilians die. What is left but the shoes? Shoes scuffed and torn, no longer having feet to carry them. Shoes empty now. Work boots still bearing mud from the last field that he had plowed with his father. Empty now. Red sneakers with white stripes brought back from America by her oldest son, given to her youngest, both of them immediately running outside, kicking the soccer ball back and forth, the older one ruffling the younger's hair after a well-aimed goal. Empty now. Heavy and white, they were the first pair of shoes she ever walked in, the first she had learned to untie so that she could wriggle out and once again feel the sand sift between her toes. Empty now. His work boots were resold many times. Next season, he would have bought a new one, or perhaps the season after that. But these old ones, darkened from the soil, had become supple and familiar. They knew his feet, grasped his ankles, kept them strong. Empty now. She had smiled when he offered her the embossed leather pumps made for her in Italy from the pattern he had carefully traced around her narrow feet, long toes tapered in perfect symmetry. Empty now. Regulation boots smoothed by sand salt crystals seeming to be so much a part of the desert they had walked. The inside soles showing imprints of thick, heavy feet. Empty now. And these handmade slippers were a vanity only. 
a grandmother's silk-flowered kiss that never touched the grand because as her father's favorite, she was still carried everywhere. Empty now, the red heel she saved for, the brown loafers passed down, the sandals strapped and tied. All empty now, the flesh gone, the blood gone, the legs gone, all gone.
Destiny Muhammad. Destiny Muhammad. It's always a pleasure to be honored to share a stage with her. So, you know, you know, they still do the news at like dinner time. You know, so this poem is kind of a like that, but I just want to tell you a little bit about the end of it, which is about the African bees. Now, you know, African bees uh, are hard-working bees, but they are fierce. And European bees, they're kind of lazy, <laughs> but they're mild. This is a true story, incidentally. So this British ge gen geneticist said, I'm going to take me some hard-working, fierce African bees, and I'm going to mate them with some lazy, mild-mannered European bees, and I'm going to get some mild-mannered, hard-working bees. Come to find out, no surprise to me when I found out, African bees stay up later than European bees. True. And when do bees mate? In the evening. And the queen flies up higher, and the first drone that gets to her, that's who mates. African bees fly higher <laughs> than European bees. So they got a whole lot of African bees that were pretty fierce. And they broke free in Brazil, and they crossed Costa Rica where they killed a cow and went through Mexico, got to Texas. And so there's a lot of African bees around uh, wreaking some havoc. So when I get to the bee part, you'll know why they're there. Newscast. Death is dropped onto my plate each evening. Pressed between big game scores and electronic weather report. Abbreviated newsprint, punctuated with glossy photos, cut away to open graves. Large, spiny mouthfuls of my dead relatives are stuffed between my clenched teeth and tight jaw. Tears run from the corners of my eyes. They ask me to eat my dead. Swallow them whole, neat, of 200-year-old bourbon, distending my belly, leaving no waste. They ask me to consume my dead and maintain my peace, my place. Each evening, the day's counting is brought out, skimmed across the globe. Platters of dried and delicate babies, mixed with brittle, forgotten elders. Next to terrines of impaled mothers. Those who only needed to eat. Those who rotted from man-made diseases. Those who imploded because their bodies simply refused to fight anymore. A roster of those killed and wounded in battle civilizations, unavoidable casualties. A portion of suffering piled high, presented with a flourish, cacophony of applause. Now, open wide, chew. chew. Cut to commercial. But I have been taught about I eating the, the dead. dead, that it is not to be done. Unless. It is the heart for valor, the muscles for strength, the soul for forbearance, the mind for history. history. Eating their expendable, their unneeded, their discarded, the bones cracking between teeth, scratching holes into lungs. This modern day cannibalism is always painful. So I've begun to feed on life. Watch the African honeybees who move and, and move and nest. migrating across and continents, nest. gathering, building, and stinging all who dare exploit the sweetness of their honey. I come, you see, from peoples who have lived for eons making peace with deadly bees while harvesting their lush syrups. Yes, I have, begun. I have begun to feed on life, which tastes bitter at times, 
and sticky like melon juice. Sharp. Sharp like tree bark. Feeding on life. Study. Studying bees. Learning. Learning to sting. Fashioning. Fashioning a stronger hive. And so uh, this one I wrote uh, with uh, Thomas asked us each to write a poem. And um, I was thinking of standing our ground and holding the line. And so this is called Lining Up because um, we all have to take a position. <laughs> and even if you think you didn't take a position, that was your position. <laughs> so we going to uh, line up. Get in line. Where's the line? Conco line. Electric slide. Slide, dance line, smooth oh, across the floor. floor. Write a line. Line, please. Make a line. Rhyme the line. Not this time. Hold the line tight now. Acknowledge the tearful first line, parade to the brass-filled second line, dancing back from the graveyards of memory of the lost and forgotten, of the martyred and murdered, in front of police lines, military lines, death lines. Don't toe the line. Slip. Slip below the line. Forget. Forget about the borderline. This land knows no lines, is owned by itself, unseated by the indigenous caretakers who knew no lines between sea and mountain, desert and valley, except the fault lines hidden beneath Earth's mantle, causing the land to crumble, rumble and crack. Rumble and crack. Don't cross the line, be the line. The family line, the ancestral, ancestral line. line. Hold, Hold it tight. tight, move it, push it forward. Do not ignore Confederate lines. Oh drawn in divorce, devotion to an endless war, composed of thick armed lines, white right on one, one side. side, the rainbow's promise on the other. Cut, Cut that, that line. line. Move to the front of the line. Battle lines formed by those who love humanity, Change cherish our, our colors, colors, celebrate, celebrate our all bloodlines. Blood Relish all the lines we share and cross. Hold the line against those who spew hate and ignorance. Sprout it like skunk weed fouling the air. Our future lines are determined by our strength. Not. Not jive lines. Trying to catch someone on the sidelines. <laughs> Not phone lines full of static and weak connection but by freedom, full lifelines, existing without flags or doctrines, inside drum lines, beating out sustaining rhythms to our soulful song lines. Thank you, Devorah Major. Give another round of applause for Destiny Muhammad and Devorah Major. Okay. That's amazing. Um, next up, we have Tongo Eisen Martin. Tongo is, a San, is San Francisco's eighth and current poet laureate. He has been described as ne a necessary voice for those who are disregarded. Announcing him as poet laureate in 2021, Mayor London Breed said, his work on racial justice and equity, along with his commitment to promoting social and cultural change, comes at such a critical time for our city and county. 
Eisen Martin is an educator and organizer whose work centers on mass incarceration, extrajudicial extra killings of black people, and human rights. His published poetry collections include Someone's Dead Already, Heaven is All Goodbyes, Waiting Behind Tornadoes for Food, Blood on the Fog. He co-founded the black radical publishing group Black Freighter Press. Um, I just, I want to make this side note because so often folks talk about their commitment to social justice and cultural change and they take it to the academic institutions and they center on working with educators. But what I really appreciate about Tongo is the commitment to actually work with people, to work with folks with the lived experience and not talk about how to transform the justice system without actually talking to folks who have been incarcerated or still incarcerated. So I celebrate the move from just raising awareness to actually working to seed the power with the folks most impacted. So I appreciate and respect and, and thank you and honor you for that work. Tongo, please come. I talk facing away from the dead. They replace me with the change in my pocket. A penny that's yet to be invented. They say you have to know how to cut a throat on the way to cutting a throat. After sleeping on a mattress made from two garbage bags of clothes, I became content with the small gestures of plantation fires. I mean, playing with couch ashes, I realized how weird the universe was. It exists in so many places, so many random things. <clears throat> it interrupts me while I'm trying to dream. Like your clay correspondence, Lord. To be transparent, I have 20 books next to a bullet like an old man giving advice at the beginning of a revolution. I've really done it, Lord. Explored the mumbles of my mind. Explored what's naturally there, and I found no brainwashing. I found Africa, Lord. I have a future. It takes place in the diasporic south. I have morning possessions, modern militancy. I mean, windows to the south. I'll walk on a missile for food. I guess you will not want flowers for a few years, Lord. Will I be tied face to face with the country I murdered? Merge with us, Lord. A old metal versus a new metal. A old metal versus a pool of meandering imperialist faces of multiculturalism of sorts. The dead replaced me with a comedian's chest cavity. Instead of a chest cavity held tight, it takes a violent middleman for me to talk to myself. Stories that travel through other people's stories. A song about a song, a hemisphere about a hemisphere. Stories that travel through a conquered poet. Hey, my mother remembers Africa, Lord. She killed on behalf of you, Lord. I wore a machete all winter and no one asked me what it meant. I read 1,000 books in front of the world. What I do is fight poems and sleep through decadent San Francisco prayer circles. Watch people play for post-working class associative services or recreations of a governor's desk, ruling class art of utility flank plan, uh, find a sociopathic bureaucrat. <laughs> a day some white people scare even easier. TV in the basket next to a ceramic baby wearing ceramic armor musket prize and he fantasizing through the art of the poor that trendy latches locked before a guy. Black art hunted down like a dog and hand over my friends, Lord. <laughs> Lord, I think I'm going to die in a war. Unelected white people in my small house like a blue song, no spiritual effect, or dollhouse H-bomb, a pony show near dead bodies, apartheid weddings that go right, apartheid white people who give birth to mathematicians, the spiritual continuity of barracks and police stations, a chemical interpretation of a Sunday trip to church, church smells in their pockets, a river mistaken for a talking river, no autobiography outside of small personal victories of violence and drug use, made in the image of God trinkers who white abolitionists confided in their children about. 
man, chemical assurances that they will switch from black artists to white artists, <laughs> from black guy to white guy, from black worker to white worker. I think about you cautiously, Lord. The same way I think about my childhood, Lord. Foxhole Friday nights, man, most of life is mute. A comedian points out a planter's field to a priest. King Sugar Cane, King Cotton, King Revolutionary to Bowler Central. Containing all modes of shallow introduction, introducing. An unlisted planter class speaking about fevers and balance sheets and reassuring the masses that we could figure out our fathers later. A priest took my mother lightly, Lord. Stood in front of parishioners re fantasies about black art. Priest reading confidently before I broke him and broke his parallel. You know, after the day, I've never been a poet before. A little brother watches his big brother's friends. They lean rifles on shelter walls. They agree with me and call it literature. It's a simple matter, this revolution thing. It's a really lot of no one to keep nothing God-like, to write a poem for God. I go to the railroad tracks and follow them to the station of my enemies. A cobalt tooth man pitches pennies at my mugshot negative all over the United States. There are toddlers in the rock. I see why everyone out here got in the big cosmic basket and why blood agreements mean a lot and why I get shot back at. I understand the psycho spiritual refusal to write white history and take the glass freeway. White skin tattooed on my right forearm, ricochet sewage near where I collapsed into a rat infested manhood. My new existence is living graffiti in the kitchen with a lot of gun cylinders to hack up. House of God in part, no cops in part, my body brings down to Christmas. The new bullets pray over blankets made from the old bullets. Pray over the 28th hour's next beauty mark. Extrajudicial Confederate statue restoration. The waistband before the next protest poster. Hey, by the way, time is not an illusion, your honor. <laughs> I will save your desk for last. You're a witty, your honor. You're moving money again, your honor. It's only raining one thing. Nine white cops. Prison guard shadows reminded me of spoiled milk floating on an oil spill in the neighborhood, making a lot of fuss over his demise a new lake for a Black Panther party. Malcolm X's ballroom jacket slung over my son's shoulder. The figment of village. A new noose to a new white preacher. All in an abstract painting of a president. Bought slavery some time, didn't it? The tension screeches of military bolts and election Tuesday cars, a cold-blooded study in leg irons, proof that some white people have actually fondled nooses. And that sundown couples made their vows of love over opaque peach plastic and boat action audiences. The Medgar Evers second is definitely my favorite law of science. Fondled news clippings and primitive Methodists, my arm changes imperialisms, simple policing versus structural frenzies. Elementary school script versus even wider white spectrums, artless bleeding and a challenge of watching civilians think. Yeah, ter terrible rituals they have around the corner. They, they let their elders beg for public mercy. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen these kids' heads and their elders myself and see how much gravy spills out of family crest, modern fans of war. Whoa, 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 whoa. With their T-shirt poems and T-shirt guilt and me having on the cheapest pair of shoes on the bus, I have no choice but to read the city walls for signs of my life. You know, first, I, I should have apologized to the souls of the house because I'm wearing the cheekbones of the mask only. Like a pill bottle whose name is yours, name tagged on the side of a factory of wrists. I mean, teeth of the mask now. Back of the head of the mask now. A new phase of anti-anthropomorphism. Fending for real faces. Suck with one of those, well, some of those cultures that believes I chose this family. I mean, I'm not creative. Just the silliest of the revolutionaries. My blood drying on my only jacket. The police state psychic middleman evangelizing for the creation of an unmasses. An unmedgar. Blood of a lamb less racialized or awesome prison sentence. Right angle made between a point on a Louisiana plantation and a five-year-old's rubber ball three feet high and falling like a deportee plane. To complete my interpretation of garden variety genocide. You know, I, I, I'm small talk about loving your enemies a little more realistically. <laughs> about paper tigers and also gold, man, I need my left hand back. Broke my neck on a piano key, found paradise in a fist fight. Maybe I should check into the Cuban line. Watching the universe last metronome. Some call black Jacobins. Hey, just wait, just wait. These religions will start resigning in a decade or two. 
Some colorfully, some transactionally, in a cotton gothic society, class betrayal on classes. I mean, ironically, my window started fogging over too as I was trying to figure out which Haiti would get me through the winter, which poem houses souls, which socialist breakthroughs, breakthroughs like, like taking 10, back, 10, 10 steps back and, try, and finally trying steps. Like introducing Gabriel Prosser to the loneliest monk. I mean, I remember childhood. Remember the word childhood being a beginning. Scribbling on an amazing grace, I rented this body from some circumference of slavery. Remember being kicked out the Midwest. Strange fruit theater, lithium and circuses, like-minded stomachs. I mean, the ruling class blessing their blank checks with levy foam, with opioid tea, sentient dollar bills yelling to each other pocket to pocket. Cello stands in the precinct for accompanying counter-revolutionaries. My mother raised me with a simple pain. A poet loses his mind. <laughs> like the room has weather. A first girlfriend gravity. Difference between me and you is the madness wants me forever. A pair of apartments defining both my family and political composure. Books behind my back. Bill money paved into the streets playing euphoria, euphoria, cliche. Bracing for the medicine's recoil. Sharing a dirty belly sound with my friends. Black Jacobins, underground topography of a grandmother's hand. Psychology of the mask now. Teeth of the mask again. You know, all street life to a certain extent starts fair. Sometimes with a spiritual memory even. pre dawn soul clap, your father dying even. Maybe I push the city too far. My sensitivities in landfill districting and menstrual whistles, white supremacists graffiti on westbound rail guards all overcoming, reauthored, reauthored by revolutionary violence that chose its own protagonist, a muted stage of genius. The garbage is growing voices. Condensed Marxism for uh, warrior depressives, underpasses in their pockets because they just might be deities a decent bit on the panther name. A merciful Marxism. <laughs> This disquieted home life, a metaphor for relaxing next to a person who is relaxing next to a gun. I stared at my father for a few seconds, then returned to my upbringing. Returned to the souls of Ohio black folk. You know, revolution down there pegging at this point. You know what the clown wants? The respect of the ant. Wants to interpret pain only. Wants to pull a 38 out of a begging bowl. Wants me to hurt my hand on this penny. I'm not tired of these rooms. Just tired the world to give them a relativity. My only change of clothes prosecuted the government finally learned how to write poems. Shootouts that briefly align. That make up a parable. A parable's like, white bodies are paid well. Or do white men even have leaders? Are all white people white men? A rap pitches a river. Can almost taste the racial divide. Can almost roll a family member's head into a city hall. Legislative chamber knows who in this good book, knows who in this good book will fly me. All I, all I do is practice, Lord. Decided not to talk out of anger ever again. Met my wife at the same time I met new audience members for our pain. We passed each other cigarettes and watched cops win. A city gone uniquely linear. Harlem of the West, do a true universe. I'll always remember you in fancy clothes, my wife said. So here I sit, twisting in silk ideation. Rifle made of post bellum tar. Targets made of an honest language. This San Francisco poetry is how God knows it. It's me whining. Riding among the lesser respected wolves. Lesser observed militarization. Dixie List prison bookkeeping. I mean, the California Great Coast are coming. Lynch mob gossip and bourgeois debt collection. I mean, it's tempting to change professions. Mid poem. In the Chicago briefing, the white sergeant saying blank slate for all of us after this black organizer is dead. Standard academics toasting two buck wine at the tank parade. Bay of nothing, Lord. Just nuclear cobblestones, gun line athleticism, and the last of the inherited asthma. Children giving white dolls to play with in fear. Facial expressions borrowed from rich people's shoestrings. I can hear hate and teach hate and call tools by people names and name people dead to themselves. No one getting naturalized except fair lazing soon. Carving the equator in the throat soon. Sorry to make you relive all this lore. All this pre dime monarchy friends putting up politician posters and snorting the remainder of the pace. Mental scripts shoving into the walls by their elders. My children sharpening their quarters on the city's edge. For these audiences, I project myself into a ghost-like state. For these gangsters, I do the same. Every now and then, take a nervous look east. Sleep becomes Christ. Sleep starts going to racial identity. Do you ever spiral, Lord? Has the gang age betrayed us? Be patient with my poems, Lord. So much pain it's a point to crown. I mean, it has to be a freight traders come with it, Lord. Is that my revolver in your hand? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, better, 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 better presidents than these have yawned at cages, <laughs> have called us holy slaves, <laughs> filled the school libraries with cop documentaries, baby. I don't have money for food. Shit. <laughs> I don't have a present moment at all. <laughs> Man, you know, uh, uh, apparently, apparently too, too much of San Francisco was not there in the first place. 
this this dream, it requires more condemned Africans, or, or um, put another way, state violence rises down, or um, still life is just getting warmed up, or um, army life is looking for a new church and ignored all other suggestions, or uh, folk tale writers have not made up their minds as to who is going to be their friends. I mean, th th this is the worst downtown yet, and I've brought a cigarette everywhere. I've I've taken many a walk to the back of a bus that um that led on out the back of a storyteller's prison sentence, then then, then on out the back of slave scars, but but this is my comeback face. I, I left my watch on the public bathroom sink and, and took the toilet with me. Threw it at the first bus I saw, eating single mothers half alive. Yeah, it flew through the bus line number and on out the front of the White House. I mean, hopefully you find comfort downtown, but if not, we brought you enough cigarette filters to make a decent winter coat. A special species of handshake. Let's all know who's king and what's the light span of uniform cloth. This coffin needs to quit acting like those are birds singing. Rusty nails have no wings, have no voice other than that of a white world dying. Their book pages in the gas pump. Catchy, isn't it? The way three nooses is the rule of the way. The potato sack masks go so well with radio calls of the way. Condemned Africans fought their way back to the ocean only to find ways made of 1920s burnt up piano parts, European backdoor deals, and red flowers for widows who spend all day in the sun mumbling in San Francisco. Red flowers, but what's the color? What's the color of a doctor visit? There are book titles in the streets. Book titles like "Hero, You Make a Better Zero," or uh, "Hey, Fur Coat Lady, the President is Dead," or uh, "Pay Me Back in Children," or they hung up their bodies in their own. <laughs> they hung up their bodies in their own museums. And other book titles pulled from a drum solo. <laughs> hey, run here, hero. Lied to hiding place. All the bullets in 10 precincts know where to go. There's no heaven nor any other good idea in the sky. Politics means that people did it and people do it. Understand that when in San Francisco and other places that was never really there, I bet this ocean thinks it's an ocean, but it's not. It's just Sixth and Mission Street. All know who's king, king of thin things. You know, like America, I'm proud to deserve to die. I'm going to eat my dinner extra slow tonight in this police state candy dispenser you all call the neighborhood. No set of manners goes unpunished. Never mind a murderer's insomnia or the tea kettle preparing everyone for police sirens. You know, societies wander together like hopeful drops of a virus. Citizen testaments bent on offering me a nation of breadwinners to hold me back. Like it's a Brinks, I wrinkle the concrete sometimes like flesh. My Martin Luther King permanence turned away from a podium into the reeds like God is a dangerous twin. Black August to the mountaintop balcony on my bedroom floor. You know they steal you from the earth itself and suspend you and your broken neck from their foolish euphoria. From the loyalty oath of their great superstitions, loyalty oath of their agrarian reform. I return to my mother completely disrespected for peeling the heat off of purgatory. They kill poets like me. Walk me away from my poems never to be heard from again in this final industrial complex or bloodlines picked over pick through a sporting spiritual death or your devil at least half made police become a pretty word <laughs> I'm reading I'm reading a, a lynch mob shoestrings like like they were tea leaves uh, teaching you how to write about cities <laughs> it, it's the 25th century in the mirror people T tyranny against your chump chains and your chump to be mocked even with a gun in your car cubit of needlework spilled tune for the proletariat the relapse ministry Talented people curled up in a fetal position next to a diamond dime, just another service day in the theatrics of tea house fascism. In a bouquet of surveillance cameras in the poverty of God. New blue eyes, corpses of water, a newly potted presidency. A one big shiny coin if you ask an animated capitalism, another non-literal voice killing his white freedom. The deification of hyphens. Medicine bread and picture shows, great protesters in LA, guests of our ink. Drop kicking Rose in the graveyard, DC mink like a stone torn in half. The pen advances, despite CIA guideposts, despite non-African past and futures, a metaphorical but not surreal day in the horn-ridden life, horn player improvising king, like a radio prize fight featuring Shango himself, a real hand sweeps the land of racism, may I return to the ground, may I make progress with the gun, on our mother Emmanuel they put on music that evening, a swinging type body language feed a drink with firm minute five dollar bills, for your body language some applause, my past stomach lining, neither a good thing nor a bad thing like being psychic on the way to a lethal injection, it'll sit you down with Lady Day. Lady Day leading you through surrender their souls to Africa too soon. Polly thought floating in a cup of water, she saved me. Access in my stomach, access in the love of the American lynched. Coat sleeves, wooden and avalanche into the wrist. Our mother Emmanuel, avalanche into the sharp keys. Pain, the deal you make with pain. Piano makes sense for them. Laying hands on the world gradually. Addressing the bend and necks on the streets of the north. Travelers sailing in pain, repeating pain in the north. 
10 trigger fingers on that piano of harmony, what have me. Putting a hundred fights on every direction off of the Lady Day, leaning on trees again, recruiting the countryside itself, saying, lay your plan out on this lightning. Make your poems the corner pocket of men. I've greeted the blues itself. America may clean my dead body, but will never include me. There goes the poet. <laughs> killing without killing. Never mind this painting of your language. May I be a meaningful lynching a crow's passing good and dead by the afternoon <laughs> what's up man yeah that's all right thank you Give up another round, Destiny Muhammad and Tongo Eisen Martin. Amazing. Um, I got, I feel like I just was, I want to thank um, Shauna Sherman and Thomas Simpson for inviting us to the Church of Poetry today. Yes. <laughs> to witness the spiritual revolution and to be challenged to be a part of it. So thank you so much, Thomas and Shauna, for this opportunity and to the amazing speakers and poets today. Um, another round of applause as Thomas and Shauna come. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Davis. And as usual, you did a fantastic job. <laughs> One thing I've come to learn from working with Dr. Davis is that she often winds up giving more than what one expected or even what she may have predicted. And that's been the case today also. So thank you again. We've kind of been through some trenches uh, around health care and health fairs over the years. So um, I really appreciate you and what you do and what you're doing now. And did someone say you were a commissioner? You're the city librarian. Introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. Michael Lambert. I am proud to be your city librarian. Thank you for being here today. All right, thank you very, very much. I would like to thank you. Do you have any closing words? Yes, thank you for all coming out. Um, books are all available upstairs on the third floor in a special di display, so if you have time, take, check us out on the third floor. Another thing I would like to say is I've looked at some of these photos in this exhibit as, you, as I wandered around, and if you get a chance, take a look at them. Do you know anything about this exhibit, or is this permanent, or... You're not sure? Okay, but there's some fan, do you know? Yes. These photos are from the San Francisco History Center. So these are historical photographs of the African-American community, community in our city. All right, thank you. One thing I'd like to do last before we go is we invited the spirits of our ancestors to come be with us. We'd like to allow them and ask them to go back to their resting place. So we do that by saying, Ashe. 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 Thank you so very much. We look forward to seeing you at our future events. If you didn't get um, an email about this event and you'd like to know more about what we do, there's a place that you can sign up out at the table out there in the semi-lobby. <laughs> All right, thank you. Have a good evening. <laughs>